Moving on to our last category, which is, uh, you know, pretty risky predictions because yeah. you never know what can happen with injuries and we or did scandals. It, we did this in different ways. Um, the, um, for myself, I chose players who are in high school, who are in college, who are being touted as greats down the line, although they have not reached that yet. And, and, and for me, in my perspective, what I did was I used players that are already in the pros right now that have all-time great stat potential. Not, you know, like pretty much guys that are that are on the cusp of being a possible all-time great. Although we do actually have one player in common, which we thought was pretty funny. All right, absolutely. So. And, and, and that play, oh yeah, we'll, we'll talk about we'll, that play in a minute, but no, my number one, Kevin Durant. Uh, the Oklahoma City Thunder, they're now 18 and 14 now. An amazing, amazing story. And Kevin Durant is going to be the most prolific scorer scorer in the NBA in the next decade. And and he already is, is challenging for the scoring title. He's in his third season. He's about to make his first All-Star appearance this year, especially with his team winning, which right. helps him. Um, but he definitely, like I said, I said with Wally Matthews when I had him on the show, I said that Kevin Durant was going to be one of the top five NBA players by the end of 2010. And looks like he's you know, heading there. He's you know? going to be pretty close. And, he's, and his defense has gotten, gotten so much better, better. You know, as well. So, But talk about your number one. My number one is Bryce Harper. Uh, as Bryce Harper is a high school baseball player Jeez. in Las Vegas. <laughs> he is being compared. There really is nobody. No, I've never heard. Catcher and shortstop. Yeah. That's what's crazy. <laughs> he's actually left high school early after his sophomore year so he could go play at a junior college because you can't play at, I guess, age 16 to in, in, the, in the NCAA. So mm -hmm. he's playing in junior college for another year so he can get drafted at 17 or 18. Mm -hmm. He's hit home runs over 600 feet. His average, I believe, is somewhere in the 700s. 700s, yes. He's being touted beyond anyone I've ever heard at a high school level, since maybe since A-Rod? I, yeah, mean, I mean, even more. I think even more. Yeah. I think we're almost yeah. going back to the Dallas Strawberry in 1980. Yes, indeed. Of Grinshaw. that mm -hmm. absolute beyond belief. Sure thing. Sure, sure thing. thing yeah. But he is 17. But as I said, that's why we did, how we did this very differently. Right, because because I, I wonder what happened. Minor league, I'm sure he'll tear up minor league. But we'll see, we'll see what happens. Major leagues, right. you know. But definitely. Oh, my second guy, speaking of baseball, Justin Upton. First time All-Star this past season, 2020. Only 21 years old, ladies and gentlemen. He was the first pick in, uh, in the draft a few years back in the, uh, the MLB amateur draft. And this gentleman, I mean, he has five tools. When it comes to five tools... It's, that's it right there, you know, arm, speed, power, uh, fielding ability, and hitting for contact. Those are the five tools. He has them all. He batted 300 as well this past season. He's about to be the best player in baseball this decade, and he's about to be, I would say I would compare him to Daryl Strawberry in the 80s, Barry Bonds in the 90s. Even better yeah. than Daryl from the standpoint of uh, contact. You know, he and he, stri he strikes out a little bit, you know. He's but still 21, he's still 21, 21 years old and still batting 300, you know. But Justin Upton is that ridiculous to yeah. me. Yeah. My number two is we're going back to basketball, but we're going college. John Wall. Mm. John mm. Wall is the fastest guy I have seen on a basketball court oh, yeah. in years. Um, he is the fresh freshman point guard at Kentucky. He will be the unanimous number one pick. He'll be the number one pick regardless of who of who has it mm. next year. He's already being. If he leaves, he'll leave. <laughs> you never know. You know, he may want. He, it was always against. You know, education. You know. <laughs> yeah. And the NBA contract will be enough for the education. <laughs> um, I mean, the Nets have Devin Harris. The Nets are a potential number one pick, and have Devin Harris, who's an All Star point guard. They'll take him. Yeah. I mean, they're, and, they're, and there'll be matchup problems. Put them in the backcourt together. Yeah, that'll be a dangerous team. Yeah. Um, he's just, and he, he's very coachable. His goal is to be the greatest player of all time, and he's already stated this. And he apparently has the work ethic to match that. And you just watch him play, and he's just a lot of fun to watch. He's already being—I don't know if I said this or not—he's already being compared favorably to Derrick Rose, who was the first-round pick right. two years ago. Or, right. And his, the potential. Yeah, better Jay. Better, better jump. Jay than, than Derrick. And Rose, he's, fa so. he's actually faster. Mm -hmm. Which I find amazing. Right, right. And uh, you're, oh, you're number three. And uh, well, we can run down the rest of your list, yeah. you know, definitely. My number three is actually the one player who is a professional at this point and is the one player I believe you have on your list, or you have him as honorable mention. Oh, yeah. One Martin Del Porto, who won the U.S. Open uh, coming back from two sets. I think it was from two sets to one down. Maybe it was just coming back from two sets over Federer this year. 6'5, mm -hmm. 
great strokes, solid net game. Will be the best player, the best tennis player by about 2013, 2014. Fourth one, you didn't want me to run through the uh, Oh, the yeah. Mm -hmm. so, um, my fourth one's kind of a little bit more of a risky thing, and it's probably not going to happen. It's more hoping than anything else. But I am a U.S. soccer fan, and Josie Altador, 19, scored the big goal of the Confederations Cup against, against the number two goalie in the world, Naiko Casillas, when they beat Spain and broke their winning streak. Um, he's playing for Hull now. He's 6'3", six, six, built like a rock. And he's the U.S. forward that they've been looking for literally since Brian. He'll be, he potentially will be the best forward they've ever had. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Donovan, I consider the best midfielder and the best player they've ever had. Mm -hmm. Landon Donovan, the best player they've ever had. My number five, Joe Flacco. Which I have as number five, yeah, too. Great um, minds think alike. Yeah, we do. We do. <laughs> we do. Uh, Flacco. So, yeah, you, uh, you can talk yeah, about Flacco. Yeah, I'll talk about Flacco. Yeah, what's so great about this kid? He was pretty much passed over at the University of Pittsburgh for Tyler Flacco, you know? And then he went around, turned around, played a division of FCS school in Delaware, uh, put up great numbers in Delaware, and his stock rose like crazy. I had the honor to interview him while he was training for the scouting combine, which is an honor. Very, very down to earth kid. It's football, that's all he's focused on, you know? And the thing with him, his meteoric rise to a mid first round pick as the 18th pick overall for the Baltimore Ravens, and then who would think that in his first two years, leading Baltimore to the AFC Championship game, and then this year about to go to 4,000 passing yards with the, the lack of weapons that he has. Only Derek Mason, basically. Right. But it's just amazing. Flacco, this guy will win a couple of Super Bowls, especially with a great foundation of Ray Rice behind him in the yeah. backfield and Michael Orr up front, you know, just uh, and, and that defense still being reloaded, of course. Getting a little older, but being reloaded. Still but, solid. Yeah, Flacco, and, and just he just has that that cool way to him. He's kind of like another Joe. <laughs> like, you know, like another Joe. You know, um, we all know who that Joe is. I can't. I hope. Was. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> but, I hope not on the Super Bowls anyway. But but but, but he but, is. But physically, physically better than the other Joe. Yeah, oh, six, six five. Four, six, five. His arm is arguably the best in in football. It's up there with with I guess with Jay Cutler as a straight just bullet arm, mm -hmm. but the, the the rocket arm, excuse me. And when he has receivers, if they can get the, some receivers to, I mean, Mason, as you said, is a solid, solid possession receiver. Mm -hmm. But he's 33, 34, 35. And he's going to retire after this year, too. Um, and they have nobody else really that I can think of really that's a top-level receiver. So yeah. we'll see what happens. Let's see, definitely. And then my, oh, then my number three, John Tavares, uh, the number one pick in the 2009 amateur draft, NHL amateur draft, already has uh, around 18 goals this season, leads rookies in scoring, eight power play goals, and the Islanders have played better hockey. He's going to, he's him along with DePetro, um, DePetro, Rick DePetro, Rick DePetro will turn that franchise around. The Islanders will be definite, I think, title contenders by the middle of the decade. And Roy McIlroy, he's the next, they talk about the next challenge to Tiger Woods, especially, well, Tiger Woods in the situation that he's in now. You know, McElroy has a great opportunity at 20 years old. He finished top 10 in two Grand Slam tournaments this year, and he finished third in the PGA Championship. 20 years old, has a drive that's ridiculous, Irish, and he's going to be a major star as well, uh, a, ri a chief rival to Tiger Woods in this upcoming decade. I have the culture okay. as that star of the decade. Wow. So much to talk about running out of time. but <laughs> well, well, well past the time.